So I had a bit of a puzzling cybersecurity incident at work today. So this user was just on the internet looking at a couple of shopping websites and then all of a sudden his internet usage went absolutely mental and he went to about 60,000 different domains in a period of about 20 minutes. So that is quite spectacular, really. I mean, no one goes to 60,000 different websites in 20 minutes. I mean, literally, you cannot type that quick. Or maybe you can, I don't know. That would be impressive if, if you can. But anyway, it's going to be scripted and scripted malware. But I couldn't actually work out what it was initially. I mean, I'm I'm going to show you what's going on now and it will all look very simple and think, how could I not get that so quickly? But yeah, honestly, I thought it was like malware executed on the machine or from an email because of like how the it sort of originated and how it sort of led to that on like the DNS or web website lookups. So what it turned out to be was this thing from oh, God, it's 12th of January again. You think something this old could be fixed by now, but... New mage card, credit card skimmer capable of stealing payment information on multiple e-commerce platforms. So some researchers discovered a new multi-platform card skimmer stealing payment information from various stores hosted on major e-commerce platforms such as Zencart, WooCommerce, Shopify and BigCommerce. The malware identified as MageCart variant hijacks the checkout process by injecting a fake payment form to collect the customer's credit card details. The new variant also compromises e-commerce platforms that do not support custom JavaScript checkout forms. So domains were registered back in August last year, and it tries to access very different forms of that there. So it starts ZG9, TYW, and all the rest. It can be sort of considered as a credit card skimmer because it's injecting fake payment details in front of the real ones, or pretty much before the real payment details. So the user had gone to this website called Jeepers Peepers and in this page which honestly is so hit and miss it doesn't actually load it like a second time or third time so what I'm going to do is bring out one I looked at earlier. So I'm looking at the developer layout in Chrome and we have this ZG, TY, W etc domain there. And it's an XHR request, an XML HTTP request, so that is sending data outbound. And what we'll find in here is that it's originated from some JavaScript on Shopify, which I don't think that's the true originating point, but rather it originates before that and uses, abuses Shopify's JavaScript there to send the data outbound, or it might also be looking for other data in the background as well. But what we have, if you look around details here, just while I'm on the home page, it's not really a lot. There's nothing much in there. And a preview of it says account suspended. Yeah, right. Account suspended. No, that, that's just a, like a placeholder in case you, anyone look at the website <laughs> happens to believe it and thinks, oh yeah, there's not actually anything there. Or oh, it could be a park domain or something. Yeah, it's not really. So if we try and look at another page, well, what happens when it's gone? Where's that JavaScript gone? So, so I mean, it's really painful to get working. Absolutely painful this was. Uh, I seem to have spent far too much time messing around with it. But anyway, let's uh, block the domain and see what happens. So I'm going to re-enable block in my DNS server and I need to flush the cache on my system. And then if I get a new incognito window, and let's try and go to the website. And we seem to have a few different queries happening here. Some more domains that uh, didn't appear before. Um, yeah, this is what's happening now. The malware is desperately trying different combinations. You can literally see the different letter combinations pretty much going up sequentially as it's trying desperately to find a domain that actually exists. So not all these domains actually exist at all. Not, not all of them have been registered. Only some of them have. I think it was about 20 or so had actually been registered. But if you happen to block all those sort of first 20, then it just keeps trying sequentially. But the amount of errors on the page is getting out of control now. All these failed lookups do start to make uh, Chrome a little bit unresponsive there. And I'm, I'm just trying to get back into the uBlock Origin settings there. But yeah, that that's really struggling to respond. 
If I had a lower powered CPU, then I think it really would be struggling at this point. I mean, what's Chrome sitting there at? Um, about 14% utilization. <laughs> what's that, a gig of RAM used, but I suppose that's nothing unusual for Chrome. But yeah, it's the CPU utilization does start uh, creeping up a little bit. When I was speaking with the user this morning, he was saying his computer was becoming very unresponsive and he ended up rebooting it. But I think had he actually just closed the website, it would have resolved the issue. Utilization has significantly reduced. We've gone from 10% now down to well, zero. And looks like, yeah, memory usage has uh, gone down significantly as well. So yeah, that uh, malware does have an adverse effect on uh, the browser. So I did try this in a different browser. I did try it in Brave, but I have that set up in a different configuration to Chromium, so it's not really a fair test. But what I did notice was that the number of different domains being queried was a lot slower than Chromium. So not as many resources being used there, but um, yeah, interesting comparison. It seems to have been a bit of difficulties actually trying to get this working and trying to get it working in different configurations, but now I kind of sussed it. I mean, even then it's still a little bit of a hit and miss, but um, yeah, it was, it kept me amused today playing around with this, but I mean, how would you spot this running on the website? I mean, realistically, if you didn't have this sort of blocking enabled, then no, you're not going to notice it. Do antiviruses recognize it? Probably not, or not always. Um, it just so happened with the user at work today that our upstream DNS server was blocking it, so therefore it uh, caused the malware to exhibit this exact same behavior, which uh, yeah caused it to stand out like a sore thumb on the DNS logs, and that's how I spotted it. But yeah, if you were just visiting that Glasses website, um, no, you're not gonna know. And realistically, it should be down to the site owner to clean up their own website, or to have seen it and clean it up. I can't actually understand how they could not have seen this, and it must have been there for quite some time. Yeah, that was a, a little look at uh, messing around with uh, some e-commerce malware. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.